Okay, number seven. So we have a tree being struck by lightning. In that lightning strike, 20 coulombs of charge go through a potential difference of 100, one times 10 to the second, mega volts. Capital M is mega times 10 to the six. It's a million. Um, so part A, we want to know how much energy is dissipated. So if we know the units, if we know what they mean, this is easy to 20 coulombs times 100 times 10 to the six joules per coulomb, because that's what a volt is, joules per coulomb. Coulombs cancel, we're going to get an answer in joules. It's going to be a big number. This big number is 2 times 10 to the ninth joules of energy. Now, do you remember back on exam 2 when we were doing stuff with heat and all? So Q equals M C delta T and Q equals M L V. We're going to take all of this Q, all of this heat energy, or all of this energy, and make it do heat work for us, and have it boil water. All right, so our water is starting at 15 degrees. So delta T is going to go to the boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius, minus 15 degrees Celsius, 85 degrees Celsius. The heat capacity of water is 4186 joules per kilogram degree. Mass, we're figuring out Q we have. Latent heat of vaporization for water steam that happens at 100 degrees Celsius. Um, 22.6 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. All right, so I'm going to say Q equals MC delta T plus MLV. I'm going to factor mass out of there. Q equals mass times C delta T plus LV. And then I'm going to divide both sides by that weird stuff in the parentheses and say mass equals Q divided by C delta T plus LV. All right. When I do that, um, Q, we said, was 2 times 10 to the ninth divided by 4186 joules per kilogram degrees C times 85 degrees Celsius plus, usually we would figure out Q equals MLV, but we had factored the M out, so we're just doing the latent heat of vaporization here, 22.6 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram. Make sure you have all that stuff in the denominator in parentheses. When I do that, I come up with a mass of 765 kilograms. Um, there's a lot of water that would be instantly vaporized, and when that happened, the tree would likely explode because um, water has a pretty um, small density relative to the density of steam. So you'd be taking, you know, relatively dense stuff, relatively high density, relatively dense material, turning into something that's not dense at all. So a huge expansion in that huge expansion of this huge mass um, with all this energy being added, the tree would blow up. And every now and then you'll wander in the woods and see a lightning struck tree and have a sense of what happened there.